هي هي باتشا ماستر رافنس اومادا يا هاي وزعتك انت مواطن ايراني يا سيد انت مواطن Last time I made a video with only marines for Wings of Liberty Today we continue that with Heart of the Swarm Boy did you guys give me a lot of suggestions for the next video But I've decided the challenge for today's video will be using the strongest unit in the Zerg army The drone Rules are fairly simple The only unit I can build are drones And whatever a drone can do I can do as well I can also use all of Kerrigan's abilities and powers That includes all of her unit summons as well. And this rule you're familiar with, I can use all the units that are given to me in the mission, whether it be at the start or through exploration or whatever. But before we begin, I ruffled quite a few fetters when I used the mind control structures in the Wings of Liberty campaign. So I decided to replay the last three missions without using any of the OP structures, and it was glorious. <laughs> So now that we're done with that, we can get on with Heart of the Swarm. So a quick recap, Jimbo killed his best friend and the simps have conquered the galaxy. In their wake, e-girl generals now have divided and conquered the last remnants of civilization. In order to combat the e-girl generals, Valerion has Kerrigan hidden in his secret fortress, using her DNA as a way to counter the simp disease. It was during this lab where Jimbo found out that Kerrigan was cheating on him, not once, not twice, but 66 times. Heartbroken and immunosuppressed. Pressed, Jimbo hides away in his room while Valerion runs some experiments on Kerrigan. <laughs> It's here we are introduced to the greatest unit in the Zerg arsenal, the drone. Drones are a very interesting unit. They can morph into any building in the game. They can also harvest resources and do about 5 damage. $5 a month! So after a pretty quick tutorial with Booster Gold watching us, Kerrigan decides to commit mass murder and leads a rampage across the base. It's okay, all the stuff Kerrigan destroyed were robots. It's a good thing Kerrigan doesn't care about taxpayers' money. We spam out as many drones as possible, tearing away the paper mache army of Brad Pitt's base. And he sends out the Iron Giant, but we send out the Legion of Drones. After that display of the drone's power, Arcturus Minx sends out a steel armada after us. Just as we are about to leave Chuck E. Cheese, me and Jim decide to get the heck out of here, but Jim and Kerrigan almost broke the most important rule during Ramadan. No Regardless of their sins, Jim and Kerrigan still have to get the hell out of this base. Luckily for Kerrigan, she's an expert at the C-20A sniper rifle. She even gets access to two abilities, Force Choke and Hadoken. Cleaving through the Terran forces, the guys without the fishbowls at least. We pass through long hallways, holding pens, gas chambers, it reminded me that Kerrigan has killed billions, effectively the Adolf Hitler of the StarCraft universe. I end up riding the MTA and me and Ava were separated, then a Dark Souls boss ambushed me. StarCraft Dark Souls boss, I wonder how good this would be. Not very. Sadly, I had to leave Jimbo behind. I tried to convince his friends by murdering them. After I get mad that they want to live. Wow, how selfish. Arcturus attacks me at this convenient time and we are forced to separate as I let them handle the battle cruisers while I go and find James Eugene Rayner. <laughs> Jimmy left me on red, but I'll still wait for him at the rendezvous time. But someone pointed a cannon at our beloved. I'm gonna need to erase that right away. Yo, fucking bitch! I'm not a bitch. I'm not a key, boy. Whoa! Make this sacrifice. So, we get into the actual game. Now you may wonder, Master Rothless, how are you going to finish the game with only drones? 5 damage is a good amount, but nowhere near enough to get through the campaign. Now the drone itself isn't important, but rather the transformations it can turn into. In this campaign, we are going to do what I call aggressive turtling. We're going to build up enough base defenses to guard key areas and funnel them in with structures. The major key to completing this campaign is the almighty spine crawler. You'll see some of that at the beginning of this mission as we defend our base while we wait for our reinforcements to arrive from our new friends. The Zerg are fractured after the events of Este and Kerrigan is pretty okay with any free help she can get. So with the spine crawlers and Kerrigan's new force powers we were able to annihilate every single enemy wave coming at me. Once then the worms from Hollow Knight pop out and come to my aid with Zerglings, Queens and of course the dreaded combo of drones and spine crawlers behind them. After the mission is complete we run off to the distance and leave our former children behind, something I'm all too familiar with. Divorce. <laughs> 
stop laughing. I almost killed my pet dog and we find out terrible news. The gymster has fallen. I suddenly felt my bank account drop as my greatest mom Luke had fallen. Minx has taken everything away from me. So with my sights set on that luscious beard, I aim to avenge Jimitin. Now we have two choices to go to Caldir and Char. Now for your sake, choose Caldir. Nobody warned me and I picked Char and that was my first big mistake, especially with this challenge. I had to restart my campaign and if you're going to do this challenge, don't go to Char first. So we head to Caldir instead. Waiting for us is a Leviathan, which I would describe as a lung and an intestine in space. <laughs> Here we meet the colorful characters in Harv the Swarm, the Leviathan's genitalia, and the resident neckbeard. He's gonna be important later, but for now he can upgrade the attributes of my units giving them unique traits. So after some upgrading, we head on to our first mission in Caldir. We arrive at Caldir with many of the Zerg turned to popsicles. The only thing that can survive are the native Ursodons in the area. After collecting Collecting their essence, my units can survive the harsh elements of Hoth and we reach a frozen Zerg base with no queen in sight. I wonder where she went, but we quickly commandeer it and the Protoss activate as they can smell us from a mile away. With the Protoss activated, they're going to send out a warning beacon, we gotta destroy these plot devices before they can alert the Golden Armada. Now the mission's fun gimmick is Flash Freeze, in which the Protoss are frozen completely for a short period of time, giving me a chance to mow them down. During the periods when the Protoss are unfrozen, they will attack my base but waiting for them will be a wall of hatcheries, evolution chambers, and spine crawlers to defend my base. The only units I could use were the six roaches in addition to Kerrigan. Eventually, with aggressive turtling, we were able to seal the Protoss off, ensuring that they were always met with an eager wall of spines and spores. That's a lot of damage! With my commando force, me and my roaches go and destroy the plot devices and finish the mission. The important thing to note about this game are the ways the AI focuses on structures. Some groups will focus on structures in front of them, while many Many more will focus on the attacking structures instead. The AI intelligence is definitely on a spectrum, abusing that is probably the most fun you can have in this challenge. Now we head back to the plot where we caught a prisoner, she's probably glad her species doesn't have any nostrils. Could you imagine the smell of the leviathan? Oh yeah, helping. For now we take away Fort Choke and instead enter the peaceful ways of the Avatar. So Kerrigan completely ignores the call in this comment and needs to kill the fleeing Protoss trying to run away from her. Niches get stitches. To sum up the mission in one word? Spore crawlers. A lot of spore crawlers. Like holy shit a lot of spore crawlers. It basically became the historical representation of the Battle of Britain. After killing some colonists, we head back to our home where we return to the evolution pit. I neglected to mention that a secondary function of the evolution pit, besides the witty dialogue with Apathur, is well, evolution. Our Zerg can evolve to become completely different variations of existing units. While we will never be able to change and evolve the drones, we can still impact units that we can get for free and later units that I can summon. We also grab the handy ability of Zergling Reconstitution, which allows me to respawn Zerglings when they die in combat. So let's get back to the story. Kerrigan probably does the most dickish thing in StarCraft, but we can ignore the rest of her crimes. I get to play as the Pale King in his erotic form. The level is a lot of fun, and I get to play as the StarCraft version of a facehugger. However, I have a question. How did I get into this doggy? I mean, Kerrigan used their big brain powers to impregnate Larissa, but how did the worm go inside the doggo? Which hole did he use? I finally eat enough Protoss to choose my gender, becoming Niadra stronger and thicker. This mission feels like being on the USG Ishimura, slowly infecting the crew minus the Scientology. <laughs> After chilling with my victory, I get jumped by Zeratul. He tricks me using his Protoss mind magic, leading us to our next destination of planet Zerus, home to the primal Zerg, the caveman Zerg basically. Oh hello there! Big man! The next mission has us feeding the thick boy, fighting against Brack, who isn't very tolerant of other Zerg races. Same thing as Abathur actually, and while I'm a fairly liberal person, I wouldn't want to see some inter species erotica. To summarize the mission, I return to my job at Burger King. We have to harvest enough food for the big guy to join us, while defending myself against the prejudice and racism here on Ceres. This is how you eat a Big Mac, nigga! I end up having him on my side, and he ends up helping me in my jihad across Ceres. I don't wanna hear it! 
This next mission has us finding the oldest uterus in the universe, the birthplace of the Zerg. We gotta protect Kerrigan as she ascends into her fursuit, and while this happens, we will be attacked by two different Zerg armies who will also fight between themselves. Once again, we're given a small amount of units during this mission. This mission right here makes the Kerrigan only run impossible because we can't use Kerrigan at all. She will be in a chrysalis till the end of the mission, and the mission itself is incredibly easy with a nice blend of swarm hosts, spine crawlers, and the secret ability which summons all the locusts from the afterbirth of the spawning pool onto the two armies like the plagues of Egypt. With one second left to spare, Kerrigan becomes the Queen of Blades, summons a hurricane, I always knew that she was the Avatar, and introduced to the well-spoken Dahaka. <laughs> The next mission I'm going to breeze through because it's a Kerrigan only mission where we fight against three bosses that are very similar to the first boss we fought in the second mission, so it's about as interesting as that one. With the exception that one of the bosses looks like a, a penis, a joke. <laughs> After the mission, I grab some probes, and I also get the ability to summon my favorite units in the game. There's a mutation which allows you to heal units with bailing explosions, which is very interesting if explosions did that in real life. Damn it! Time we head back to Char to pay Donovan a visit. So now we go to Char, and as I said, I made the mistake of going here first, and I'll admit, coming here and killing. <laughs> Warfield as a human would have been pretty weird. Here we get on to the first mission in Char, where it's a competition between me and this termite queen over who can collect 100 eggs first. However, you can't let Zergara get enough eggs to threaten you, so I would always find the chance to pay her a friendly Surprise, visit. We get enough eggs to create a spectacular army. Warning, you might need the latest AMD Threadripper 2990WX to even handle this laggy army, where the hamster wheel you call a computer is going to fry. Zergara joins my party because why not? Ah! This leads us to the Bone Trench, and it lives up to its name as random attacks on us are a constant, and we need to defend against these random attacks while also dealing with the Gorgon Battle Cruisers, destroying them before they get to us. After some plot involving Zagara and her PTSD with the Battle Cruisers, we find out that we can use the Scourge Nest to take them out. The Scourge won't be coming back, but they will die with honor. We destroy Battle Cruiser after Battle Cruiser, finally destroying the last one and finishing the mission. After this mission, we get the upgrade. Malignant Creep, which offers a lot of bonuses, not just for units, but structures, making my defensive strategy very powerful. Some of the rest of my Zerg brood around the galaxy can see my chakra and know that the next Hokage has arrived. These Terranid Hive Fleets will do my bidding for me as they rampage through the galaxy. <laughs> Now we get to the final mission in Char. We are given a huge army of Zerg and burst down the door to Donovan's fortress. One tip, always lead your army to the left side and thrust all the way to the planetary fortress. You'll thank me for this later. Afterwards, Donovan proceeds to use the nuclear option, but he's no match for the power of my spine crawler spam. He tries big gun diplomacy to keep me back, but he should know that nothing will stop me from his three silver coins. Afterwards, Donovan gets the big dead, but I do like how in this scene you can see how Kerrigan controls the Zerg with her forehead muscles. I find out that Jim the Simp is alive but trapped in the castle with Minx threatening to kill him if I break the restraining order. Next we head to Sky Gear where we meet the greatest character in the campaign. The Terran once again take a page from Walter D. Jacko. With the power of a million infested Terran investors with fungus and mind control. <laughs> Don't dislike the video. It's an ability with the infester. You need infestors to infest these structures, or there's no infested Terran. So, with this loophole, it was pretty sweet to grab some battle cruisers. Eventually, we burst down the door to the Neckbeard Cave hidden in the fortress. And we meet Narud, who, again, remember, was making us collect the cards of Exodia in Wings of Liberty. Apparently, he serves the Chaos Gods. Who knew? The Taldarim have their first reskin, so don't worry, it's not really their final form yet. We'll be able to see that close enough. In the mission, we have to kill every Hydra that pops out and sucks out Kerrigan's life force. After freeing two Brutalisks, a unit that desperately needs to be added into the multiplayer, we kill every Hydra, Bro, How many? even using the power of the Spine Crawlers to deliver the killing blow. Oh, that's quite a lot of damage!
Last mission for Skygear has us yet again not using Kerrigan, but instead using Stukov, who's way better. He has longer range than Kerrigan and has an ability that melts through armor that also has a larger cast range than any of Kerrigan's abilities. While Kerrigan and Narud are having their DBZ battle, I gotta run around and pull some levers. Kerrigan quickly bodies Narud. <laughs> and we interrupt our quest of revenge for some destiny. I take a bath to wash off pieces of Narud still clinging on to me, and it's time to find our boyfriend, Eugene. <laughs> Alright, this video is too long. I'm going to breeze through these next two missions. The first mission has us dealing with Valerian and Horner as Horner comes to terms with his erectile dysfunction that gets in the way of his relationship with Han. After that, it's a solo mission where Kerrigan breaks into prison to find Jimmy. I come out of the closet and tell my beloved that I'm a furry, and he responds in the most human way possible. <laughs> So finally, after a lot of dead drones, fine and spore crawlers, hatcheries, we reach Core Hall, where Minx is hiding out. Kerrigan somewhat redeems herself, choosing to spare the civilians. But it's soon gonna be time we rip and tear. We upgrade Kerrigan to get a decreased cooldown on her abilities, and the first mission has us clearing a path for these massive turrets. Ensuring that they live a long and prosperous lifestyle is our primary objective. After setting up enough of these structures, we can push forward and clear the Terran base with some reinforcements. After this mission, I get the ultimate ability to summon the Leviathan anywhere on the map. It's funny that I've been inside this thing the whole time, and it's so small, I love StarCraft's take on scale. This gigantic cuttlefish is going to make the rest of the game so much easier. <laughs> In the second to last mission of the game, Minx unveils his trap card, whole gang joining in on the fight, including our favorite one-armed cripple. The mission at first has us pushing through the Terran base, but once the plot device activates, the secret agent Dahaka is activated as well, and he has to take out some smaller plot devices to shut down the main device. The field will slowly damage old things in it, so it's imperative we shut down this device as quickly as possible. After all these devices are shut down, we can push forward and destroy the main structure. And finally, the final mission is here. After a quick pep talk with my gang and guilt tripping Jimmy, we engage Mink's palace. The objective is simple, bring down the palace door. There's a lot of Terran in our way, so let's get to it. Jimitron and the rest of his army come down to help us out, and the mission goes normal. We create giant walls and choke points out of our structures. We push forward, moving our structures closer and closer to Minx's stronghold, abusing the Leviathan and eventually assaulting his last foundations. Then it was time. The campaign was almost complete. I knew this campaign that started off with drones will end in drones. So I build an army of drones and pull everybody off mining and we charge forward attacking the gate to Minx. The guns weren't enough to stop all of us and I use spine crawlers to protect the drones from incoming reinforcements. Eventually we break down the door and push forward. We finally reach Minx and after a quick battle we finally get our